All right, so we'll let uh, people filter in here while uh, we we'll figure out any uh, technical issues on the back end. So okay. We'll um, soon. So it doesn't let me share my screen in here. Doesn't let you share your screen in here. Uh, don't. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so let me share my screen to you. I need to open up the create source protector. Is that what I want? No, that's not what I want. Projector create output projector. That's going to be the one I want. I want that in front. I want this over here. I want this, share this to here. And you can see pretty much live what's going on. Fantastic. Twitch.tv. Let's go into the How long have you been creator dashboard and monitor the old stream. Actually, better not go on camera here. All right, so we got zero viewers so far. Usually someone shows up. All right. Primogen server is looking a little empty today. But if no one shows up in a little while, then uh, we'll just get going anyway. Okay. It'll be a good experience, um, even if we have no one watching. True. Are we using Clang or GCC? Uh, I'm using GCC, though this is basic enough, standard enough C code that it honestly won't matter. Okay, I have GCC. What's going on, Moose? Well. And then the C docs are on Microsoft, right? Uh, I wouldn't use Microsoft specific C docs. Dev docs then? Just whatever. All right. I've just been Googling things and <laughs> using whatever comes up. All right, fair enough. And then our repo is on your blog repo, right? Yes. Let me push up the newest code. But let's see. Here, let me. There we go. Got it figured out? Yep. Fantastic. Well, then let's get going. All right. So uh, today we will be writing a markdown parser in C. We'll see how far we can get. I uh, I already got started a little bit, but let's uh, let me get in it this bad boy. Uh, let's see. Get status. Get add minus a. Get commit minus m. Uh, in it. Commit. So then, of course, the important thing is to make a Git repository to hold this thing. New, we'll call this Markdown Parser. Description, a toy Markdown Parser for use in the play.date video game console among other things. Your project is the among other things, of course. Create repository, git remote add origin, git at github.com, npmail, slash markdown parser. Git push origin master. Fantastic. So we have the, uh, the git repository up at npmail slash markdown parser. Uh, I've already started by doing a little bit of stuff there. Not too much, not anything that matters, but you know, something. Uh 
ahead with the fort for this. So you know as well as anyone, uh, Lucky, who is my uh, special guest today on the stream, uh, writing C is difficult. Yes. Yes, it is. I've Indeed. Also, uh, you're a little quiet. You've stopped uh, being one inch away from your microphone. I was not kidding about that. All right. There Fantastic. we go. So let's take a look at what you have. So let's take a look at what we have. Yep. So I suppose I'll just start by going into the uh, the Markdown parser code that I've already written. Not a whole lot here. Uh, basically, at the top, you have your standard includes. Uh, are you familiar with the hashtag include at the top of a C file? That's how you do imports, yeah? Uh, no, it is how you do imports. However, uh, as I've learned, there's a few interesting things about it. Uh, okay. They're preprocessor macros. So the first thing that happens when you uh, load up a C file into a uh, compiler is it'll go through and read all those preprocessor macros and do what they're supposed to. Um, if you include or with uh, the greater than less than signs, I believe that means it will search the system paths for those things. So we're using stdio, stdlib, and, and strings. If you include with the, uh, the double quotes, it will use uh, a local path for those things. And it's basically the same as taking all the source for that file and dropping it directly in, into the file you're in. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So then, so, uh, sorry, go ahead. So if I had this right, this single hashtag, right? Yep. That imports from a standard library? Well, the single hashtag uh, means it's a preprocessor macro. And then the preprocessor oh. macro include basically means take whatever file once you find it, and mm -hmm. it effectively drops it into the current file during compilation. It doesn't actually do that, but you can think of it that way. It makes it a lot easier. Okay. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So the next thing I have uh, is enum md adder. That's uh, markdown attributes. Um, I figure if we do a, a subset of markdown instead of the full markdown specifications, it'll be a little bit easier. Um, and I think the way I've been thinking of doing it is reading through an entire file, uh, character by character, and then determining which uh, subsets of those, which strings of those characters are going to be in what format. Um, I think think it's going to get more complicated than that, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Uh, so I just have one for the basics, you know, bold, italic, monospace, you know, in, indicating a code block, heading one, heading two, heading three. Uh, I don't know that the structure is going to work actually, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Okay. Uh, so then I made a, uh, a struct called markdown text, which contains an array of characters. Uh, are you familiar with arrays in C? No. So basically, in C, an array is just a contiguous list of pointers. Um, Mode.c. Uh, let's see. Hashtag include. Uh, we'll do stdio.h. And then we'll do a function main int main. Uh, and this just means that main returns an integer. Um, Oops. Uh, so basically, if I have a, um, let's see, if I have an array uh, in, I'm trying to figure out how to do this, um, my string equals uh, See, I'm, I also don't know very much about C, so I'm, I'm sharing every bit of knowledge I have. Declare a string in C raw. Nope, that's not what I want. All 
let's try inline array initialization and see. There we go, this is what I want. Um, into array. So this is uh, so an array. I say hello, I, I actually say hey, and then end it with a null termination. Uh, that's just a null character at the end of the, uh, at the end of it. Um, and then you can do uh, printf my string I wonder if this will actually work uh, cc my oh, oops array demo dot c uh, and dot slash a dot out and so it prints out the uh, the that um, that string, right? Right. But so then, if I do like printf uh, my string at index zero, it should. Oh, is it mad at me? Bane. Let's see. Oops, that's on it, percent percent s. And this one I'll do the same thing, but it's percent something else. Uh, print f char. Percent c. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm using uh, print f. It is a format. It takes a format string. And uh, then the variables that are inserted into that format string, the format string is a string that contains everything you want, but the, that contains what you're gonna print, except any variables that you want to print. You uh, use a percent followed by a series of characters to say how, it wants to, how you want it to display that, um, that variable as it's uh, being printed. So percent %s indicates a string, percent %c indicates a character, right? Right. So you're familiar so with. Is, uh, oh, sorry. This is a um, very um, similar syntax to Java. No, you've got it backwards. Actually. Java has very similar syntax to this. Right. Right. So uh, if I print out the character at, at uh, zero, uh, then we should get an H. Which, if I split my window, open up a terminal, and run that same command. Save and then do the same thing. We get an H, right? And then in the same way, if I do my string uh, one, we will get an E. However, uh, what you'll discover in C is that this this uh, array index thing is actually just a uh, it's just syntactic sugar for doing pointer magic, right? Right. So if instead of I say my string at one, uh, what that's equal to is um, the address of the my string pointer plus uh, the size of a char times whatever you put out there. So it'll be equal if I do, um, let's see. Uh, char pointer my string plus size of uh, char times the index, which it's mad at me. Format specifies type int, but the argument has type char. Um, I'm going to see if that just works, actually. Dang it. Give me a five. Uh, I screwed that up some kind of way. Does this work? I swear, there's some way to do this. Oh, that's an I. That's an I. 
hold on a second. Let me, let me, let's do this right. Uh, arrays are just uh, pointers. <laughs> C. Somebody else has already done this. They've done a better job of this. Oh, so I've, this is I've done this wrong. This is um are you casting it to a a char type right now? In your format? Um not really casting it. Okay. Let me get this working before I uh oh well now it's really mad at me. <laughs> it doesn't know what to do. I've given it some nonsense. Yeah, so I have Format specifies type char, but the argument has given an unsigned long fix available. Um, well, let's try this again. I bet this is right. Size of is going to get me a. Oh, now it's really mad at me. There we go. Now I've got it figured out. So what I'm doing is I'm dereferencing the result of taking the uh, the pointer where my string is stored and adding up the length of one character to it, and then which goes to the next uh, thing pointed to in the array. If that makes sense. So if I change this to two, then I'll get a y. And then if I change this to three, I'll get a seg fault because I'm dereferencing a null pointer. No, I won't. I should. Actually, no, I won't because it's not actually a null pointer. It's just a null literal. Which means the same thing will work the other direction. Or if instead of declaring it as a uh, an array up top, if I do a... This incompatible integer pointer conversion initializing char pointer with an expression of type int. Oh, I've done this wrong. I swear, there's something here. Anyway, uh, long story short. I don't even want this anymore. RM array demo dot C. So anyway, long story short, uh, this is supposed to be a in, uh, declaring a character array inside of the struct for markdown tank text. Then the uh, the text length, which is uh, the size of this array, is going to be stored in there. And then an MD adder, which is one of these attributes up here. Um, okay. I forget why I said type def struct instead of just uh, struct, but there's some difference in there that I don't know. And then I have something to show the entire document, which is just a array of pointers to these things. And I probably could actually just do array here. Maybe not. Eh, it doesn't matter. It'll probably be fine. Why not a string literal, says the small moose. How much does one of these things cost? Think you can use just string, think you can just use string syntax? I don't know. Oh. So are you with me, Lucky? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I I'm went through a whole bunch of the... nonsense. I don't know that I anything was learned. doesn't matter. Int main, of course, the uh, entry point of the program returns an int. Uh, if I make it return a zero, which of course leads the rest of the code to be unreachable, and then I run it down here, uh, cc... Um, what's that thing called? mdparser.c and 
dot slash a dot out. Um, okay. What you'll notice is my shell has returned successfully. If I echo uh, dollar sign question mark, I would get a zero. If I return a one, whoops. So then you'll notice that my shell actually doesn't have an indicator indicator that's broken, but if I echo uh, dollar sign question mark, I get a one because that's what it returned. Apparently, the difference between a normal struct and type def struct is the ability to alias the struct directly. That's right. I remember because I figured this out when I was trying to uh, declare this thing. Because otherwise, if I didn't do it, I'd have to do struct md doc document and do some other stuff. And this helps when you're trying to include this from another file, which eventually will move this out of a main file, will move this into a uh, library and have headers for it. Good catch. So then I uh, declare a file, which is part of um, that's standard lib. And then I initialize it by opening up this uh, test file.md uh, cat test file.md. This is just a, uh, a blog post of mine. I think it's a good one, but it's very basic markdown. So I figured it would be uh, perfectly fine to uh, work with. It opens it up in read mode. Um, I forget what that int c does. Oh, this is the character I'm reading. So let's see. So if the uh, if it can't open the file, return negative one. Then I declare a document, and then I malloc it, which I don't know why I did that. I don't think I need to do that yet. I'm not returning it or anything. This is... I guess I'm throwing the document on the heap. I don't know why I did that. And then... Uh, until the end of the world, I will be, you know, while one, I got to do while loop to read a single character. And then if it's uh, the, if it indicates the, uh, the end of the file, then it will break, which means, you know, it breaks out of this loop, close the uh, file uh, thing, and then return zero. Um, what I had before was I did a print F, uh, whatever that character was, percent C, and then the character. And if I run this now, it will print out the entire file. It did not do we? That. I have a question regarding the main method. Yeah, what's up? Does it have to, re does it have to return a, an integer? Uh, can we declare it to say void, or is that a no-go? Uh, if you do a void, the, uh, it'll actually work just fine but it'll get mad at you. Okay. So like if I, I should not have done that. I should have done one of these and then do one of these. If I do that, it will, oh, I made another change, but it'll work the same way. Um, but if I echo dollar sign question mark, it still comes back at zero. Okay. But I prefer returning an int because that's what you're supposed to do. So that, leads me to a question um yeah. does it just inherently return a falsy value is that why it returns at zero uh, the zero board? is actually a truthy value is it yes zero means there were zero errors and the program executed as intended uh one negative one other numbers uh used to kind of mean more than they do now uh, these days, a non-zero exit code just means failure, and a zero exit code means success. So, like, if I do, um, so, like, uh, the one place this really matters is when you're using uh, the shell, you'll have this and-and thing to uh, run something on success. So, if I do dot slash a dot out and-and uh, echo, wow, uh, since it uh, exited successfully, it'll say wow. But if I, instead of returning zero, I return a one and then do the same thing. 
uh, the wow won't print because it noticed that there was a, f a failure to exit properly. So this and and doesn't trigger and it doesn't do this, the second step. Okay. That makes sense. That does. Yeah. So that's why we do that. Okay, so it looks like you're already kind of grabbing the characters and um, printing them out. Yeah, right? I'm doing a bad job of it. I swear this was working yesterday when I was doing this earlier. I clearly have screwed something up. Oh, I know what I did. It's supposed to go down here. Oh, I'm just running it again. <laughs> There we go. So now it's printing it character by character all the way through the file. And that's what the program does now. So instead of printing it, we need to parse it. Okay. Um, quick question. Yep. How do I compile um, C code? Uh, what platform are you on? I am on Arch Linux, and by the way. And Fantastic. I'm using Arch Linux, by the way. GCC. Yeah, me too, by the way. Uh, NeoFetch. There we go. Arch Linux, by the way. So uh, I need to have like a sound bite that plays when I'm, when somebody mentions Arch Linux. Arch Linux, by the way, you know something like that. So is it G -G GCC your file, and then do I just run the executable a dot o? Yes, you could do GCC and then md parser dot c, and then that will compile it to a dot out. Uh, okay. Otherwise, you can do CC and the same thing, and then it'll just use whatever your system has set for its default C compiler, which I believe is based on uh, dollar sign CC. That's not right. Okay. It seems. All right, I have no idea what it's based on. It figures it out some kind of way. I don't see anything printing. Okay. Uh, that one's not going to print right now in the version that you have it. Gotcha. If I... Uh... If I push and then you pull, it'll uh, it'll print now. Uh, shout I out to Smart Water. It obviously doesn't make you any smarter because I've been drinking this stuff for years, but it is water. Anyway. Yeah, I forked this. Hold on. Um, I have to go to GitHub. So anyway, uh, we got five viewers. Uh, chat, give it up. Let's 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 hear what your opinions are. Do you think we'll have this thing? Uh, Parsing markdown by the end of the uh, the stream, and by parsing markdown I mean parsing any markdown at all whatsoever. All right, great. Oh, there we go. I think so. Thank you, Musius. Uh, that that's the attitude I'm looking for. This is good. Otherwise, we'll get mired down in C nonsense, and I'll have to read a book before I come back next time. And you know, nobody wants that. I'm just going to go ahead and slow this down again because I, I broke it. All right. How'd you break it? What'd you do? I did it dumb. Classic. We've all been there. All right. Hey. All right, so you got it? I got it. Okay. So what we eventually we're going to do is hopefully in this iteration, and then we'll have to make this more advanced later, maybe not, uh, what eventually we're going to have to do is load up every different markdown thing into this MD doc uh, structure, 
and then we'll have that, which is like a parse markdown file. And it'll be represented in memory, which I thought was going to be a concern on my uh, the platform I'm targeting uh, because the platform I'm targeting only has 16 megs of uh, RAM. However, uh, I discovered that this file is four kilobytes. So even if, uh, even if this is programmed really bad and somehow uses five times as much memory, you know, five times four kilobytes is still nothing compared to 16 megs. I mean, that's amazing. And you're going to be running yours on a, a regular computer, right? Correct. Fantastic. So literally it doesn't matter. Uh, no need to worry about, you know, trying to make this small or uh, doing anything smart. We can just brute force this the wrong way. Well, we can take into consideration the um, the space com complexity too. If we're willing to sacrifice time, we can uh, make it take up a lot less memory as well. Yeah. So I'm thinking what we do is and it's already barely using any memory right now. So I'm thinking what we need to do is uh, since we're already parsing through the file line by or character by character, uh, we have a little state machine that determines what type of uh, file it is. And then we'll have this uh, markdown. We'll have something that will parse through it. Uh, you, we'll call it each time the, uh, what's it called? Each time the, oh, you know what? I just realized we don't have an attribute for t regular text. MD text. Anyway, so each time uh, we get a character, we'll see what type of character it is. If it's not one of the special ones, uh, then we won't worry about it. And then if it is one of the special ones, we will uh, mark the beginning of it. And then, let's see, we'll mark the be beginning of the special text, whether that's bold, italic, uh, or a header. And then uh, go through until the next time it's supposed to be something different. And then when that happens, we'll take all of those, that bit, those parts of the text and then apply a... Uh, and then add one of these uh, MD text structs to our MD doc, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so the first thing we need to do is uh, figure out something, I'm sure. Uh, I guess... We probably need to know how long to make this uh, MD doc, MD text, um, or texts uh, thing. So if we just initialize it at, I don't know, a thousand, then it'll probably be fine. <laughs> right. Still looking at these enums what what is the um plan because i know that you can sometimes use tags in markdown as well uh i believe that's just headers with a new name unless i'm missing something oh great server not found am i still online you're I still am. online. Huh. This computer is... Uh... There we go. Arch, by the way. Yeah, Arch, by the way. No, no idea why it uh, decided to do that. So we got headings, alternate syntax... Uh, do you mean like HTML tags? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that. That sounds complicated. Okay. Because we could we could actually just use um, an or, right? So if we were to look at the um, equivalent for the markdown, then we could just do mark, you know, one pound or H1, for example. That would make sense, but then we have to parse XML. And I really don't want to parse XML and see. Okay. Uh, 
things like this. Nested block quotes, no thank you. Block quotes with other elements, also no thank you. Actually, that said, this, the nested nature of some of these things is interesting. I wonder, what if we redo this struct so that instead of having a markdown document that is just a linear list of different markdown attributes, we make it so it's like a little tree structure of all the markdown attributes that can be applied on top of each other. That would make sense. That sounds really complicated to write. Let's do that. So structs within structs, basically, yeah? Yes, we will be doing a recursive data structure, which is what everyone loves, right? So it's mm. text. It'll have the same attribute, but instead of... And it'll have its own text and its own text length. And then inside, it can also have another MD text. Struct. No, I don't want this. I want to use the other one. The. Oh, because it's not defined inside. Yeah. There we go. So now it has an inner MD text as well. But Sean, I'm thinking about how's that going to work? Uh, uh, you know what else we could do to approach this problem? What? So the nested components, um, if you're looking at stuff like uh, bullet points and the like, yes, we could simply just check for the white space as well. Oh, we're going to have to do that. That's that's but important. That also mm -hmm. might be inconsistent as well because you can use tab spaces, et cetera, et cetera, right? Or we can just look for white space. True. Hmm. This is curious. I'm going to make a um, <laughs> markdown. So account for white space. I mean, accounting for white space will just be part of our little state machine for parsing this bad boy. Potential tree. Do you look for the nested components within components? Yeah. Yeah. X for checks for nested components, and then we need to think about how we because you want this to return into the command line the markdown into text. Yeah, I want to parse the markdown first, and then after that. I don't know. Okay. Um, it might be doable to Render markdown. Okay. Yeah, it's it's definitely possible. I mean, it's a node pack. There's a node package for it. So, if somebody can do it in JavaScript, then definitely can do it in C. Certainly. Array has incomplete element type C. What is this about? Hmm. 
please. I think I'm going to do a pointer to a pointer because it seems complicated. So that works. No, I don't want that. I just want a pointer. Hmm. And then I want another int inner len. Because that's going to be arrays. So each one has text as well as an attribute as well as any number of inner members. So we can have is we can have um, you know like an MD so we can have like a uh, an MD text that has a string hello of actually we won't have that we'll have uh, an empty text that is just like that contains another empty text that happens to be bold um md atter md bold And this outer thing is, let's do md uh, h1. So inside of this text, we have other bold text. Let's say that bold text is, oh no. I went from fake syntax to real syntax. Uh, text is going to be like something like hello. So then it'll be a bold H1, which is already implied by it being an H1. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Also, we, we can definitely um, send it to the command line if we wanted. Um yeah, we should probably come up with some way of uh, re of uh, viewing this tree and then printing that on this command line, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. let me put that into the the old polyus plan. Put it into a plan. We'll just do it. And let me comment this out so it doesn't bother me. So let's do a uh, function that returns nothing. Uh, print md text. And then it will return, or it'll take a pointer to an md text. So does the uh, does the star yeah, indicate a uh, text or uh, sorry a pointer? Yes. So if okay. I did this backwards, there we go. So now it takes a pointer to an empty text, and what that will do is uh, we want it to. Let's see. Oh no, this is really difficult. Man, this C language, I do not like it. No, I'm already thinking about this. Um Yeah, C's weird. Mm-hmm. What if what I'm, gonna I'm gonna take a, another thing called indent, uh, which will be a integer. 
of how far you want to indent it. And then we can call this thing recursively and just indent and just add one to the indent as you uh, do it recursively. So you get kind of a fake tree without having to uh, worry about like closing out delimiters by doing it in JSON or something. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So we'll print F. Uh, MD text dot atter MD atter. So it's mad at me because I want to dereference it. That's still mad at me. Except it's not MD text, it's input dot MD atter. I mean, oh, that's what I want. I want one of these bad boys. Maybe. Dot. Do you mean to use that thing? No member named. Oh, that's right. It's called attribute. Then we'll say attribute oh yeah that's right the uh, enums are our unsigned ints it'll be fine we'll just use percent d this is uh this is getting annoying And then what we'll want to do is, once we've had the attribute, then we will do a new line, and then we'll print f the text. Percent s backslash n, comma, input arrow text and it's not mad at me whoo you see that i just wrote a line of c and the uh the program didn't get mad at me and it didn't yell at you yeah it didn't yell at me oh i like to uh, put on the record here uh which rebecca which i assume is my sister said if beep boop code boop uh correct that is how you in fact write code Then the next thing we'll want to do is probably, so once we have the uh, the attribute and the text printed, we want to go through it, the uh, the inner text. So we'll do uh, for i, whoops, i is int, it int i equals zero, i is less than input, uh, one of these bad boys, uh, inner len i plus plus to loop through all of those bad boys and then we'll want to uh, print md text on the inner at that array uh, index so then we have subscript of pointer to function type oh, I want uh, input inner at I uh, passing struct md text the parameter of incompatible type md text pointer aka struct md text pointer take the address with ampersand I don't know what that means what is the arrow the arrow is a dereference and then grab from within a struct okay I think because this function is taking a pointer so we want to dereference the pointer and then grab whatever's inside yeah that makes sense so I don't know what this wants
we do this that's what we want I think so that way so let me want indent plus one and then we have to figure out how to uh, indent based on the uh, the level of indentation we want so I don't know prepend number of spaces print F C this will probably do it left pad print F of spaces how do you do that all right well this isn't gonna be helpful percent star s s indent this will be it so we'll do percent star s and then we'll do indent Uh, did I screw this up? Why is it mad at me? Oh, comma. Did that make any sense to you? Because it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, no, no, it, it doesn't make sense. Fantastic. Uh, indent, comma. Let's see. Let's, let's take a look at these. Uh, C format string directives oh great we got gnu stuff uh okay so this is a manual page i should look at served in php all right rebecca i see your what you're saying and yes, I've done that before as well. However, that's like a lot. I think I have, maybe I haven't. All I know is beep and boop. Uh, no, that would actually work, but I think it's not the, the best way to do it. And this PHP page isn't loading, so let's try this one. Oh, this, this looks fun to read. Oh, man. I'm just going to go with what this random person on Stack Overflow said. I think... I, I have high hopes. I will look at W3 schools, which typically isn't that great. So but. let's do a new main function that just uh, calls this printmd text and see if we can get that to work. Int main. Do one of these bad boys, and then we'll do uh, md text. Uh, Uh, to print equals this is going to be a md text to print equals that what eh eh why is it mad at me unexpected type death md text what do you, what do you what do you want computer unexpected type name eh is this not is this not right? Can I just declare it? Alright, MD text equals instantiate struct C let's try this C99 you can use a designated initializer to initialize a struct selected identifier other members are initialized at zero augmented field members aren't implicitly in oh man this is 
Ooh. In your empty text, is it just a? It's just going to be a char, right? Uh, so when you do, it'll be a, an array of chars. Okay, and that's because you're looking at it with that pointer. Yes. So my question is, is it going to be mad that uh, you're passing a full string into? There we go. Yeah. Something, comma. Uh, I'll select this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, comma. The inner is going to be none. The inner length is going to be zero. And the attribute is, let's go with uh, MD bold. Then we'll call print md text on a on the address of md text and we need a semicolon and it's not md text it's to print i write in go at work and i write i'm writing in c right now and i cannot tell what is the type and what is the name of the uh func of what of what is the name of the uh variable because they're backwards Right. Anyway, I'm going to try zero, and we'll run this. Uh, did I lose you? I'm still here. Fantastic. I mean, like, mentally. I need to learn this language. Yeah. All right, so that actually worked. Look at that. I'm. We're getting somewhere. I'm actually shocked. Now, what are the odds this tab thing works properly? So, <gasps> Okay. Dude, look at that. Dude, the tab thing worked. Stack overflow. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. So what we can do what we can do here is now we can uh this is such nonsense to be excited over. Do you have any idea how good the programs I normally write are? This is better because <laughs> it's <laughs> I feel like uh Bar Boris from yeah, that was the guy's name. Boris from uh, the uh, the James Bond movie in the 90s. I am invincible! <laughs> you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> I only watched the uh, Sean Connery ones. Uh, fair enough. I have an idea. What's your idea? Because we're, we're, we're yak shaving right now. So. Yeah. If we pulled all this out and um, looked at it, I don't know how to. S Maybe we could just have essentially methods on each type of character we come across, right? We. Just... I don't want to do it on a. I want to be holding blocks of text that's supposed to be formatted in a certain way, right? Okay. Now, this is me being uh, selfish to my personal needs. But uh, the way it works on what I'm targeting is it will... Uh, let's see. I, I will set up how I'm going to print it and then print the block at once. So I want to get just blocks of text in specific types, right? Okay. And I think We're, having blocks will also help you because then you can just uh, do the, um, if you have a block you're working on and we have two blocks next to each other, one can be the key, one can be the value, right? Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait. Hash map. Hash map. I'm curious. Uh, in your ridiculous thing that you're going to try to do, are you familiar with, uh, are you going to be using markdown tables? Because these look really difficult to uh, parse and figure out. <laughs> uh, you know what? 
Maybe. Probably should. <laughs> right. Because I had considered just using um just using like a CSV, right? Mm-hmm. Using uh commas as a delimiter. Yep. And then um just uh having a different file for each uh each table essentially. Mm-hmm. And then just yeah, just mm-hmm. uh passing a key and value if it doesn't exist and then checking for the delimiter. But now you're thinking, of course, I should do this in a table and I can have one file full of tables. It's true, then it's um mm-hmm. what's the word? Human readable. Yeah. Okay. I think I'll write that database in Java, though, to be honest. No, no, I think you got to do it in C. We're already so far in. It's true. All right, looks like my sister Rebecca is misspelling the word interpreter. Good work. Anyway. (laughs) I don't think there's supposed to be the star at the end of it, though. I'm also spamming the chat. No, I actually appreciate the spamming of the chat. I'm working overtime here. <laughs> uh, that's fun. So anyway, now we got to figure out how to make another MD text go inside of the first MD text to prove that we can actually get to work recursively. So what I think the way to do this is going to be is to copy this whole block. Paste it above, rename this to to print two, rename this one to to print two, and then change this one to to print two, and then change this one to one, and then take the address of this bad boy. And why is it mad at me? Okay, so the end symbol, is that the memory location? That is the location of. Okay. Indirection requires pointer upper end. And of course, this is a pointer to a pointer. Is it only supposed to be one pointer? No, but this, and this is mad at me. Passing struct MD text, parameter of incompatible type MD text, aka struct MD text, take the address with ampersand, fix available. Let's try that way. What are the odds? Don't tell me the odds. Did it seriously? It seriously worked. Would you look at that? Oh, are you like a are you like a genius or something? I'm like an idiot savant, just without the savant. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh. There's no way this works with another one. <laughs> Should give it a shot. Sure, why not? Two print three. Two print three. Okay, so here's where the problem is going to be. We can change this length to two, no problem. But we have to turn Mm -hmm. these two into an array of MD text. Well, what if... Mm -hmm. When you're doing your recursion, you pass it in, and then you pass in each of the values that you need, right? So, for example, you start out with two print, right? Something ten to print. I don't want to go further deep because this will just work. This will just unironically work just fine. So I do one uh, ampersand two print three, and this will be one as well. And let's do A of length 2, B of length 2, C of length 2. This will just unironically work. 
literally not a problem. Mm -hmm. But I want to have multiple attributes under a single uh, head thing. Under a single line? So why yes. don't you take the results of all this and print F it to one line? No, no, I, than... want it, I, I want it to be in represented inside the data structure. You know what I'm saying? So that okay. one parent MD text can have multiple MD texts under it, and then each one of mm -hmm. those can have their own, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, that may, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, my sister says the ratio of which Rebecca text to other viewers' text is too high. I've never seen Markdown, but it reminds me of MATLAB a lot, actually, which means perhaps MATLAB is beaten, beating the overhyped calculator allegations. Uh, Rebecca, I'm sorry to say this, but MATLAB is actually a exactly correctly hyped. Uh, sorry, it is a much overhyped uh, calculator. It's uh, it's awful. It's one of the worst languages to program in, and it's written by engineers. <laughs> Think of a a less good Python, right? Yeah, imagine a less good Python, which is already saying something. Yeah, I hate to do it to you live, but uh. You know, the other four viewers need to know. And someone just left. I bet that was her. <laughs> Does she program in MATLAB? Uh, I believe she has experience programming in MATLAB. Okay. So let's see. back so let's do array member struct with array member c let's go back to this uh this other stuff flexible array members i don't want that is that is this something i want so this is this looks like what i want but like how does this work now like size of plus size of whatever. What if I change this inner to be an array? Flexible array member, array has incomplete element type. And actually, I'm just going to move this down here. And then move this one down here. Anyway. Array has incomplete element type, struct, MD text. What? Why is it? Why is it, why is it mad at me for this? Also, 24 bytes, size 8 bytes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then this one is... No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm guessing. I don't know how big things are in C. Uh, I bought a book on how to do this. I haven't read it. I'm just going to put the attribute at the top and do this. Unknown size array C struct. How about that? Ten people smell like size of struct. Blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. Oh. I don't know why it's mad at me now. Oh, I know what it is. I moved everything around. So they're out of order. Sorry about that. Okay. What am I doing? I want to redo in Vim. I forgot the command. <laughs> Control R. Are you in standard Vim or Neo Vim? Neo Vim. Okay.
All right, so I've screwed something up here. I'm not going to worry about it. We'll get back to this. Uh, text, text length, inner length, attribute, inner. Inner length, attribute, inner. This is totally screwed up order, but who cares? I am curious what the similarity is between MATLAB and Markdown. Let's take a look. This is gross and I want to throw up. This is beautiful. Let's look for some MATLAB code. Do oh, I search for things in GitHub? There we go. MATLAB. Hmm. This looks good. All right, so it looks like MATLAB is all in Chinese. So this isn't very good. Might work. All right, this this programming language looks awful. I guess it just spits out PDF files. <laughs> no, that's not going to be it. Let's find the deep learn toolbox. Let's take a gander. CAE, whatever that is. All right. This looks... A, gross, and B, this looks like uh, Lua code, actually. The function and ends. Yeah, it does. MATLAB vs. Lua syntax. Huh, curious. Anyway. I think there's just like something we're fundamentally misunderstanding about how to uh, nest a couple of structs and how to do arrays. Don't worry. I'm on it. I don't know what that means, but you know, good. That's the structure in C struct info. Okay. Um, so it looks like you actually have to, um, fill it out maybe. Okay. So here I'm going to put, um, what I found, but, uh, the formatting is bad. Sorry. Let me redo that. There we go. So what I'm seeing people do is they'll make a struct and then when they declare an internal struct, but that's for something different. We want something of the same, right? Yes. So I don't think that it should be an issue, right? I don't know.
access array of structs inside struct C. Ooh. Using uninitialized memory invokes undefined behavior. You need to make devices point to some valid memory before you can dereference that pointer. Devices input stream, malloc size of blah, blah, blah. Also looks wrong. What you want is blah, blah, blah. Then you need to allocate memory to each whatever. Modified code, blah, 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 blah. So. Do you have. You can do inner stuff equals malloc size of struct md text pointer times two because that's how many we have oh, oh inner stuff that's going to be a uh Nine hundred and twenty-seven up. So I I can assure you it's not a problem on my end. Well, what's your bit rate at? My bit rate? Yeah. How do I figure that out? It should show you. You're using Streamlabs, right? Yeah. Yeah. So oh, wait, it now should it show back you online. I think. It says live unstable. Poor network connection. To, poor network connection. I have the richest network connection there is. All right. Where yeah, that might be this? your Streamlabs uh, bit rate. So, um, that. stream there Alpha, is hockey's advanced. Um, there is in your network settings in your stream labs, you can set the target bit rate. Settings, um, where is network? It should be under advanced, advanced video, audio, recording. Network default. Let's bind IP. Yeah, so there should be um, there should be underneath there. There should be a way to set your bit rate. I don't see one to set the bit rate. Okay, you just have your change bit rate then. Wait a second. It seems to be back online now. <laughs> yeah, you are. All right. All right. Down to three uh, viewers. Fantastic. Well, that was fun. Anyway. Uh, uh, what am I doing? To print. Inner equals to print two to print. Well, actually I actually want to do two. Not a pointer, did you mean to use dot? That's right, I meant to use dot. And then one is gonna equal three, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. did not work. That did not work at all. That was uh, that was bad. We need to go back. Segmentation fault, core dumped. <laughs> that was IOT instruction, core dumped. Uh, so what am I doing wrong? Uh, I didn't. Hmm. Equals malloc size of struct 
to print to. No. MD text. But I want to size of the pointer to it. Expect the expression. I'm doing this wrong. Yep. Yeah, hold on. Um, size of. Okay. Um, oh, you got it. No, I've totally done this wrong. Assigning struct MD text for incompatible type void star. So the inner is a pointer to an MD text. So I need to get a pointer to an MD text. That did not do it. Do I want an address? Cannot take the address of value type void star. Wouldn't that mean that the uh, thing you're referencing doesn't have a type? Uh, I think the thing I'm trying to store, I don't know. Uh, I think malloc is bringing back a void star, which I don't want. Right. So I think this thing says is how I should do it. You're not allocating for memory for whatever twice. You're allocating memory for the structure, which includes a pointer plus something for the pointer to point to. Think of it this way. If you need two allocations to store everything, additionally, your type should be struct vector pointer Y. Since it's a pointer, you should never cast the return value from malloc in C. You can hide certain problems you don't want hidden, and C is perfectly capable of implicitly converting the void star to any other pointer. I actually do want double pointers up here, I think, now that I'm thinking of it. Not here, but here. I think this will solve my problem. This did solve my problem. Interesting. What is malloc? Uh, great question. It allocates memory on the heap. So oh. that when a function returns, you can still have it. And mm -hmm. also, I think it does other things. I wonder if I could just unironically, now that, now that you mentioned that, I wonder if I could just do uh, location of to print to. Yeah, I could have just done that. Allocates the request in mem memory, returns a pointer to it. Yeah, so this was a waste of time. Yeah. <clears throat> huh. Oh. Yeah, this just means memory allocate. <laughs> of course. Uh, but did you see this? It's working. Look at that. It's nesting. Yeah. So now we can print the stuff out as we're as we're working on it. 
Wow. So that function works, and we've tested it, which is which is great. So let's just do one more real quick. Uh, vtext to print three to print three equals md text uh, g to uh, zero md bold no no format that oh not three I want four and then we'll put it inside of two, uh, which we'll do to print three, if that makes sense. Right. So it looks like we'll have to assign there. Yeah. And then I want four. And then I want the address. And then I want one. And then what I'll do is I'll just completely forget about this. And then a new line, I'll do to print two dot inner equals malloc size of struct md text times one. And then we'll do to print two dot inner len equals one and then we'll do to print two dot inner at zero equals the address of to print four if that makes sense yeah that makes sense and we got it Wow. This is very annoying. <laughs> yeah. And we're down to one yeah, viewer. I assume that's you. <laughs> that is me. Fantastic. Um or it could be um it could be the bot too, if you have a bot. I don't have a bot. Yeah, that's just me then. Also Streamlabs should be able to tell you who who's watching. Fantastic. Would you look at that? Usually I would anticipate Diesel to be here to make comments about this. Yeah, well, you know, Diesel's a hater. Yeah. And uh, we're talking shit about him live, so if anyone wants to uh, get in Diesel to uh, to defend himself, you know, bring him in here. Uh, so I have no idea what we're doing now. Uh, so we got this thing to work. Oh, okay. So we probably need to um, actually set the values to um, to the characters in the actual markdown file, correct? Yes, that is the next thing to do. So let's bring back this old uh, main and just hoist it back up to the top. <laughs> and I'm saving this code for emotional support. This is emotional support code. Normally I would delete these things, but uh, I need this. Then we would just pass. We would just pass the um, the stuff we parse, yeah, yes. directly into what you just made, yes. and then. So that's what we'll do at the end of this. Right after we close the the file. We will uh, md print. What was that? How, what was that function called? Print md text. Print md text, and then we'll put in. Uh, what was? All right. So, ret. No, we're gonna say md text ret equals something. 
malloc size of struct md text fuck MD it doesn't have a size yet ret so we will have declared it and then we will do ampersand md text except not md text ret comma zero and here's what we're going to do this is going to be a pro game remove we're going to do void print and be text with indent print and be text with indent and we're going to do a new one, void print md text that takes in md text input. And then it's just going to call print md text with indent md text zero. And we will uh. do one of these bad boys. So this is an empty text. This is input. So now we don't need that ugly zero. What the nice. fuck? You call to undeclared function. What? What? I declared it. Uh. Uh. Well, let's copy this bad boy and paste it. Unknown type. There we go. <laughs> Perfect positioning. And another one. All right, still mad at me. Call to undeclared function print MD text. Do I, did I, did I do this wrong? I did this wrong. I named it something wrong. Pint MD text, print MD text, fantastic. So that's that's there, that's there. So now all we got to do is parse it, which is fun. So let's throw open a good old Markdown file and uh, get the stuff going. And I'm just gonna get. Add MD parser dot C, get commit minus M more stuff, get push origin master. So that's fantastic. Parse. So now all I have to do is write one function, parse, that does all of the work. So how are we going to structure this? I feel like it's time to get out the drawing tablet. Yeah. I don't know where I put my drawing tablet. My drawing tablet takes micro USB. I don't know where I can find a micro USB cable. <laughs> My microphone, I believe. Uh, you don't, your, your microphone, you can't, doesn't. Uh... What about my microphone? Your, your microphone doesn't take, uh, doesn't take, uh, Take micro USB, does it? No. 
I have a blue uh, microphone, so I have micro USB laying everywhere. I found one. We'll see if this works. Oh, never mind. This is just a short Type C cable that I thought was micro USB at a glance. Actually, you know what? I have a microphone that takes micro USB. There you go. I like to forget that I own these because this was a uh, mistake like a year and a half ago. I accidentally <laughs> bought it, not realizing that it was micro USB. So I just pretend like the uh, the cable doesn't come attached, doesn't come unattached, even though it totally does. What uh? What microphone is that? Uh, this one is a razor, some sort. Okay. Sorry for whoever's left. Uh, this is boring viewing. Yeah. We'll be back and ready to go right now. Got my drawing tablet plugged in. Hell yeah. And how is this working? This will be fine. So we'll go to a new thing, open up Krita. So if I wasn't editing anything, anything salacious, good. Uh, let's see, new image, custom document, don't care, create. So here we are. And this is far too big. Does this change? No, that just scales it. How do I change the size of the, there we go, size. Let's make this six pixels. All right, perfect. So what we're doing is we're going through our markdown document and we're creating a tree of M. Oh Jesus. This is, uh, this is not going to work out very well. My, uh, tablet is trying to cover both screens at once. So I have to write really tiny and way on the edge. You don't want to do that. Yeah. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, where's the eraser button? That's what I want. Eraser. So how are we going to lay out this code? That is the real question. Well. Basically. We want to parse it. Then pass it to the layout, the printer, right? And then bring that all to the main function. I would imagine something like that, yeah? Yeah, but how do we parse it? So we're getting a stream of characters to a single function, presumably, that will then keep track of which markdown document we're in. Right. And then create more as necessary and recurse into them as necessary and put the text in the proper markdown document, markdown uh, thing as we're going. Mm. So what we're definitely gonna wanna do, hmm. so it sounds like we're gonna be using some recursion here. Actually, um, yeah, I think so. 
we need to store Cause... a parent in each uh, thing just to recurse back up? Or we could do a little stack. Could stack do a stack. Could be fun. Hmm. What about um maybe not a stack. What is this? Hmm. Cuz you don't want um Well, actually, maybe a stack would work. So I think as we recurse, we add onto the stack, and then each time we get a character, we will determine if that character needs to go in the current uh, element thing, or if that means it needs to, we need to add another one onto the stack and start working on it. And then each time we go backwards in the stack, we add it to we add that uh, child one to its parent, and we keep going back in the stack. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. This is a puzzle. Hmm. I think the way I don't know what I'm doing with this drawing tablet nonsense. I thought I was going to sketch this out. I'm bad at sketching things out anyway. I don't even use a whiteboard. I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> well, I don't know. This is quite the curious little program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the problem is going to be when we have to backtrack. Actually, no, I don't think so. I take it back. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to start writing code. And we're going to see what happens. So we'll what is out. your... Um, what is your... What is your leader on your NVIM? Uh, comma. Comma? Yeah. Okay. Let's start. Let's do void parse. Char. No limit C. Oops. So then we'll want to do a uh, static. Array of um, what are these things called? MD text, and we'll call it stack. Except we're actually going to make this a one thousand one hundred. 1,000 array. So that's good. <clears throat> so then we'll do stack and zero equals and then we're actually going to do this 
here. MD tax ret. Let me see if I know how to do static variables and see. Let me make sure I do this right. Preserving their value even after they are out of their scope, hence the static variable preserves its previous value and its previous scope and is not initialized again in the new scope. Fantastic. Static int variable remains in memory, blah, blah, blah. Normal auto variable, blah, blah, blah. So this is how you would do it. Okay, so we are planning on doing this right, and I clicked something wrong. There we go. So what we'll do is... Hmm. So how do we get back this value at the end? Once you've parsed everything. Well. I suppose we could. Uh, we could store everything. Or actually we could make a, met, uh, a function to. Just print over the stack, right? Just pop it off the top of the stack. And then print it, do you think? No. Maybe. I think this will work. <laughs> <laughs> Stack zero. I want this to be an array of pointers declare array of pointers C there we go so a bunch of pointers to this bad boy and then we'll do a static int array index This will do it. So this will be our current array index. So we'll do uh, current equals uh, stack at our index. And then we'll do another static. Oh no. We don't have global arrays. So as we're trying to drop text into each of these things, it's going to, we're, we're gonna to try to add on to the, we're gonna be adding to an array that can't be resized. We're gonna overrun these arrays. True. So do we need to make a list of some sort? Can we make a list in C? When you say list, you mean a global array? Yeah. We could make one yeah. of those. But I bet there's a way we can do this where we just have a current working memory and then we stick them in before we go back up the stack. The only problem is we need to have a current working memory for every one. Hmm. What if we just uh, send it to JSON, right? And then let JavaScript handle it and send it back. I would do this, except I have to do this on a device that only runs C. Oh, okay. Cry if you tried running JSON on it. And we're not cheating here. We're not gonna we're not gonna cheap out and just do the easy way. We don't do these things because they're easy. We do them because they're hard. It's a good way to go about it. Um, let me see if there's any sort of, uh, array list equivalent, actually. I believe that's... It's gonna be called a global array. Uh, we could use a vector. A vector? Yeah. That isn't standard. I guess... Okay, no, I guess C Alec typically oh, uses... No. Uh, malloc and realloc. Oh, that makes um, sense. I can just use realloc. I mean, it's still reallocating the, the space, and it could get ugly. 
Let's do let's do yeah. realloc. I like it. So then, yeah, a twenty. So that's the other thing that you were talking about with uh, Malik, what it's able to do. Yeah. So you you initialize it with Malik, and then you reallocate it with realloc yes. to resize it. Yes. Interesting. I kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And what you could you could take even one one step farther and build that into a struct called an array list and use that as a uh that's not uh, we're not gonna do that. Bad. <laughs> oh dude. This is like a hundred lines of code just to implement an array list. Which is exactly why we're not going to do that. A hundred lines of code, that's going to be like 40 hours on stream. Yeah. I don't know. You want to stop here? I think this, I think we got, we got some progress. We were printing stuff. We were doing Yeah, recursion. I think so. We had lists. I'm down to one viewer, so. I think this is a good stopping point uh, on a win. On a win is a good uh, good stopping point. Uh. But you should uh, you should keep in memory uh, in your local memory um, the uh, realloc plan. Yes. yes. And. Uh, Diesel will yell at us for it, but whatever. Who cares? I mean, this seems like the, the way to do it. I, I think so. All right. Fantastic. Let me go to my stream ending page. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for watching. And by say thanks, everyone, I mean, no one's still here. People are all fake friends and haters. Uh, but if anyone uh, watching this on YouTube later uh, thought this was entertaining or fun or interesting or anything, uh, check me out on Twitter at NP Mail, YouTube at NP Mail. Uh, you got anything to plug? No. Thank you. Um, this was fun. Fantastic. All right. Adios.